Tonight with Sean McCollum. Special guests, Gary Sweet, Shera Devadier, Brady Carter and Shakaya. Plus the musical stylings of the Channel 99. And now the undisputed king of late night television, Mr. Sean McCollum. Well, has success changed Sean McAuliffe? <laughs> That's a good question. I, uh, I don't think so. I'm uh, still very much the same lovable boy next door that won your hearts a week ago and you've been seeing incessantly on ads ever since. <laughs> Although, if, if you are tuning in for the first time, may I say, good evening and welcome to television. <laughs> we'll, be, uh, we'll be trying something a little different tonight. I'll be asking, asking some questions during the interviews. I, I think we'll just see how that goes. Um, <laughs> Although, you know, as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Who can argue with that? Their grammar I take issue with, obviously. <laughs> Whoever they are. Uh, did you all have a good weekend? No! Happy Sunday! You! Pretty good, although um, some items in the news caught my eye. Uh, Russell Crowe's band, 30 Odd Foot of Grunts, recently played a concert for disadvantaged kids in the Northern Territory. I mean, really, surely these children have suffered enough. <laughs> The uh, survivors, uh, survivors of that Congo terror flight, you know, where more than 200 passengers were sucked through a hole in the plane, have spoken about their ordeal for the first time, saying that the food was absolutely appalling. <laughs> uh, some uh, good news too. Um, US forces have apprehended one of Iraq's most feared biological weapons experts, the so-called Dr. Germ. Say so what you like about this woman though, and her plans to kill thousands, at least she's willing to bulk bill. <laughs> You know, uh, in, his, uh, in, his budget, in his budget reply uh, last week, Simon Crean said that a Crean Labor government <laughs> would, uh, would bolster Medicare and that a Crean Labor government <laughs> would, uh, would crack down on corporate fraud and that a Crean Labor government... <laughs> uh, this isn't going anywhere, I just wanted to do that gag. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the IRA activist, believed to be Britain's top informer, codenamed Steak Knife, has emerged from hiding to clear his name. Uh, it's actually Soup Spoon. <laughs> and uh, there were plenty of tears in Fremantle on the weekend. Soldiers returning from the Gulf were met at the docks by John Howard. Yeah, that would have done it. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got a wonderful slew of guests for you this evening. Um, you know, when I say wonderful, I'm you know, obviously lying, but um, <laughs> you know, they're pretty good for a second show. We'll be talking to Gary Sweet. <laughs> well, I, you know, I should clarify, I'll be talking to Gary Sweet. It'd be <laughs> confusing all of you people actually talking to him at once. Uh, unless you've rehearsed something in unison. Have you rehearsed something in unison? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Listen to you. Exactly as I thought. And I'll be, uh, I'll be talking to uh, Bridie Carter from McLeod's Daughters. <laughs> Certainly, yes. And we'll have music and, I presume, lyrics from Shakaya. <laughs> and, of course, a man who's been with this show from the very beginning, Francis Greenslade and the Channel 99. Thank you. Uh, Francis, any... Uh, how do you do, sir? I'm very well, thank you, Excellent. Sean. That's good to hear. Any, any change in the lineup this week? Yes, Sean, there is. Sitting in with the band tonight is mm -hmm. the Archbishop, Dr. Peter Hollingworth. I see. <laughs> he's, uh, he's not actually doing anything, but he is receiving full salary and has full use of staff and facilities. Excellent, excellent. Good to hear. A pleasure to have you here, Your Excellency. It's a pleasure for me, Sean, to finally be treated with some dignity and respect. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> 
but of course. Well, uh, great singers don't get to be great singers without starting out somewhere first. A statement as true as it is trite and poorly worded. Our uh, opening act has been a backing singer for almost 20 years. In fact, she's one of the best backing singers around. But now she's embarking on a solo career and launches it tonight with Don't Rock the Boat. Ladies and gentlemen, Phoebe Grindel. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, Phoebe, were you lip syncing? No, Sean, I wasn't. <laughs> Good, because we won't stand for that. Now, many of you might have seen this in the paper. Uh, and, oh. And, well, if not, uh, you might be aware anyway that uh, Dick Smith is currently fighting a court battle with Arnott's. They've accused him of ripping off their Tim Tam Ranger biscuits with his own Tem Tins. All right, now I'll just show you. Here we are. That's the, uh, that's the, <coughs> that's the Arnott's original there. And, uh,. There's the alleged rip-off. Now, I, you know, the packaging is quite different. But I think Arnott's may have a case against Smithy because it's not the first time Dick's done this to Arnott's. If I could draw your attention to Exhibit B. Uh, <coughs> here we are. Arnott's a very popular Scotch finger biscuit. And uh, this is uh, uh, Dick Smith's uh, slightly less popular Scotch <laughs> biscuit. Um, not quite as long and uh, not as many. Um, <laughs> Anyway, Exhibit C, uh, you be the judge on this one. I'll not say anything, all right? There's your original Arnott's product there, all right? We all know that one. And uh, here's Dick Smith's. <laughs> the cheeky. All right, uh, we've got... Uh, here we go, here we are. <coughs> Here's another one. Exhibit D, uh, Arnott's Gaiety Biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> The way ahead of me. Here's uh, Dick Smith, sir. <laughs> of course, it's your choice and a perfectly valid one. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh, look, I, I used to love these as a kid. Uh, Arnott's uh, Iced Vovo. <laughs> and here's Dick's. Meister Volvo. <laughs> That one doesn't even make any sense. I don't know what Dick's thinking about. He's not even trying with this one, all right? Now, look, here's, here's Arnott's Sayo. We all know and love Arnott's Sayo biscuit. There we go. And, uh, and here's, here's Dick Smith's version. <laughs> Dick Smith's Arnott's Sayo biscuit. I mean, that's, that's just not going to cut it, is it? Uh, look, it's, it's going to be a long and uh, a difficult case, uh, but at least they'll have something to eat during the adjournments. <laughs> a cream Labor government. <laughs> Good to get out and laugh, all right? Now, because we're a new show, we haven't, you know, received any mail from our viewers, it's very hard to justify a letter segment. But we know that in this interactive age that you want feedback. So what we here on the Carl of Tonight thought we'd do is, is steal some of the mail that the other shows receive here. At night. <laughs> mail that perhaps wouldn't normally be read out on air for reasons of time or simple vindictiveness. <laughs> Now, here's one to, uh, to get away, all right? <coughs> Dear Getaway, uh, I watch your show every week and just love Katrina Roundtree. Well, I'll pass that on. She's a friend of mine. <laughs> Last week's story on cottages and castles was a beauty, and I thought Katrina did a great job. That's nice to hear. She speaks well and seemed to know a lot about the architecture of the places she visited. Plus, she was respectful of the older people she spoke to, and this is rare in young people today, I find. Is any of her old underwear available as I am a <laughs> Keep up the good work, Katrina, yours faculty, etc. Well, obviously, that's inappropriate. As far as I'm aware, Katrina doesn't wear any underwear. Stolen mail bag. 
Welcome back. Good you stayed with us. Um, if you're like me, it's possible that you're a clone generated from some of my stolen DNA. I suggest you turn yourself in for destruction immediately. Sorry, I'll start that again. Right, like that. That's a take two. Yeah. If you're like me, you love wondering what if when it comes to celebrities. What if Madonna and Bruce Willis had a baby? What if Kylie Minogue's head was grafted onto Arnold Schwarzenegger's body? What if Frankie Muniz was 85 years old? All these questions can be answered through the miracle of computer software. And remember, <laughs> it's all in fun. <laughs> Elvis Presley, as seen here, here we go, is as popular today as he was when he was alive. But what would Elvis look like if he was a teapot? <laughs> Or what about the late Mother Teresa? What if she was the Sydney Opera House? <laughs> or alternatively, what if she was two Sydney Opera Houses? <laughs> or what about this? What if the Sydney Opera House was the Sydney Opera House, but from a slightly different angle? <laughs> yeah. Or what about Sir Robert Menzies? What if he was an ant? <laughs> Which then turned into the Batmobile, and then back into Sir Robert Menzies again, though, with antlers. Yes. Or what if Workplace Relations Minister Tony Abbott, as seen here, was a complete tool? <laughs> no. Very much as I expected. But enough already with the morphing. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more right after this break. I see. That's, that's fascinating. Gerard Depardieu, many thanks. Um, well, Gerard Depardieu there joining us for the first of our commercial break international celebrity interviews. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a winner myself, it's a network idea. Um, now we have to... Excuse me. Hello? All right. Well, yeah, why is he doing it? No, 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 that's, no, that's okay. I'll do that. Okay, no, bye. Um, well, the news, sir, that is breaking as we go to where a man has been abducted and is being held hostage in the Melbourne suburb of Kew. Francis Greenslade is there. Francis, uh, what can you tell us so far? OK, Sean, what I can tell you is that earlier this evening, three masked gunmen burst into a house in this suburban Kew street. They're holding a 33-year-old man hostage. Uh, his wife somehow escaped during the confusion. There has been the sound of a gunshot, but we've heard nothing else from the house since. Right. Uh, Francis, have you uh, spoken to the man's wife? Yes, I have, Sean. Uh, she is, of course, hysterical. Is she? Yeah, I saw Judith Lucy the other night, and she was very funny. <laughs> so what's, what sort of stuff was your woman saying? They've shot my husband. They've shot my husband. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, must, must be in the delivery. All right. Uh, thank you, Francis. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll cut back to you and we'll keep you abreast of, of developments. All right. Uh, right. Uh, many of you would know our first guest, Gary Sweet. Some of you may even know him. A uh, smaller number of you may even be him, but obviously we're talking <laughs> fractions of percentages here. He's been entertaining film and television audiences for years, and when he hasn't been doing that, it's often because of the script, uh, so he's really not to blame. <laughs> to advertise his new film, Alexandra's Project, but hopefully weave it into the conversation so it's not all that obvious, please welcome Mr. Gary Sweet. <laughs> Gary, welcome. Uh, look, I should have mentioned, I suppose, in the introduction that you, of course, are a star of stage as well, uh, <laughs> featuring in the, uh, the recent, uh, well, I did not say recent, I suppose, revival of the club and also uh, more recently in The Recruit. Uh, yes. But originally, acting almost lost you because you were, uh, you were going to be a professional footballer, weren't you? Well, I was, hoping, I was hoping to be a professional footballer, Sean, but I lacked just a few ingredients that, were, that I needed. Yes. Um, talent. Yes. <laughs> commitment. Yes. Opportunity, pace, mm -hmm. skill. But you've applied them all to acting, yeah, haven't right. you? That's yeah, right. yeah. Well, I, I think yeah, I've got away with that. Well, why, you know, you don't come from an acting family. What attracted, or do you? You might. I mean, I don't know. My research might have holes in it. <laughs> no, 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 no right. I don't. Well, no. What, what did attract you to acting? Assuming anything did. Um, 
Well, that? when I went to teachers' college, uh, I, I left uh, high school and went to teachers' college in South Australia, and uh, I went with a mate of mine from the footy team I played with called Rocky, and on the first day, Rocky did the rounds of the science uh, science courses, and I did the rounds of the arts, and we met back in the canteen, um, and Rocky said. Uh, Sweetie, we are just too dumb for anything in the science <laughs> faculty. And I said, well, Rock, you know, we're not very creative either, so the arts doesn't look that appealing. Although, the drama course does have 70 girls and eight blokes. Ah. <laughs> and Rock said, sweetie, we're going to be actors, son. And that's funny. And what happened to Rocky? Is he still, is he... Rocky's an insurance salesman. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he's... Equ equally bagging the women there, I'm sure. Well... Um, <laughs> Not, not, that I'm, not that I'm suggesting you are. No, I no, have been at all no, in, in no, the course no, of your professional of life. Um, you, you've, you've played uh, many varied roles in your time. You've played a lot of fictional characters. You've also played uh, characters who are real, like uh, Donald Bradman and uh, also uh, Christopher Flannery. Mm. Those are very different sort of characters. One's a psychopath and the other one presumably isn't a psychopath. <laughs> uh, how do you go about approaching a, a, a real, especially Bradman, because he was alive at the time, as, as were you, and do you treat, is it, is it different approaching a real person as it, as it would say a fictional character? That's yes, what I'm saying. There's a point to this question. I think I've reached it now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anytime you want to jump in, yeah, no answer. Worries, yeah. okay. Now, I, uh, I, guess, I guess when you are, you know, every character requires a, a, a lot of research, and I think um, one of the, the guy that actually taught me most about acting was a director on, on, um, on body line called George Ogilvy and he said that what you should do is immerse yourself in a character just to research as much as you can and it doesn't matter if it's if you if you think you you're reading stuff that doesn't make much sense or doesn't apply to the character or isn't going to be used he said as long as you kind of immerse yourself then sooner or later stuff will come out that you need at a certain time in a kind of osmosis is that like it's just a complete load no, of crap a, no, a, that, did you understand anything you, I, was sorry. I, was, yeah. I was pretty impressed by that yeah. but I'm, I'm extraordinarily gullible That's what, <laughs> what, what about christopher flannery though because he's a you know he, the hitman that you played in, in blue murder uh, uh he was dead at the time but he would have had a lot of friends presumably who uh, might have visited their wrath upon you as we, as we were, i suppose the, the cricket fans if you didn't think uh wrong with Bradman? Yeah, we see with Bradman, I, um, of course, uh, you know, he was alive and his family was alive and I, I wanted to be, as, you know, obviously as respectful as I could um, to his career and all that sort of stuff. But with Bradman, he's very, he, uh, when, well, he was alive when I was, uh, when I was doing it and I spoke to him briefly and uh, one of the things about him was he had a great, a really good sense of humour. Um, uh, I've heard a story about him, <coughs> apparently when he was playing, <coughs> excuse me, Golf with Ian Chappell, thanks very much. Right. I'll, I'll fill, I'll fill. Yeah, it's all right. yeah please do. I'll fill. Can you sing the song, sure. Sean? <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. Apparently, when he was Thank a selector, God. Australian yeah. selector, and Ian Chappell was made captain, they were playing golf at uh, Kuyonga in South Australia. Um, both playing, Bradman would have been about 67 and Chappell about 27. Played a big uh, drive down the fourth fairway, and there's a big gum tree on the right hand side, and Bradman's ball was right in the middle of the fairway. And Chappell's was a little bit further back, but behind the, behind the gum tree. And Chappell was first to play it and decided to chip out. And Bradman said, you know, when I was your age, Ian, I would have smashed the ball over that tree. So Chappell, of course, responding to, you know, the uh, challenge, mm. took the big swing and went smack, hit the ball, and hit smack into the gum tree and landed about 50 metres behind him. And Bradman said, of course, when I was your age, the tree was only that high. <laughs> A good story and well told. <laughs> now, now your, your most recent film uh, effort is uh, Alexandra's Project. Yes. Uh, and uh, look, it's uh, you're playing in it. Uh, if I might be so bold as to describe the character, sort of a, a beer drinking, insensitive bloke with an eye for the ladies. Was that a difficult role for you to play? <laughs> I mean that kindly because <laughs> no. because it's it is your it, what some might regard as your traditional persona, but it's cracked open a bit, isn't it? This this character you play. Yeah, well, that's one way of looking at the character, Sean. Sure. Um, look, I think uh, I, I, that character is a you know I think he's a fairly ordinary Joe. This bloke. Um, the the thing about working with Rolf to here, who is you know one of my favourite people in the world, the apart. director as well as the writer of this film. Yeah, and yeah. producer. Well, and, you knew um, that. Yeah, yeah. And if he could, you know, he would act and shoot it and light it and 
you know, do everything he loves to be involved, uh, Rolf. But he writes such great material um, that you find, you discover, while you go along the journey with him making a film, you discover more and more things about yourself. Um, I guess about your own personality, some dark aspects and some things. It's a, it's a wonderful journey. Um, but this character is, uh, is just a bloke, I think, who, who has failed to really appraise his marriage, uh, failed to take notice of the ever-widening gulf that seems to be occurring between him and his wife, and in fact has become in many ways a spectator in his own life. Um, and he is in for a fairly rude awakening. And I want to show a clip from the film. I don't want to give too much away because it is all in the telling, this film. Yeah. Uh, so here's, here's just a clip from Alexandra's project. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to rewind it. I didn't want to give anything away. I didn't want to give anything away. All right. Okay, that, that's only a small part of the story. Uh, now, let's, uh, let's take a question from one of our callers now. This is uh, Janine from Iron Knob. Uh, you have a question for Gary? Yeah. Hi, Gary. <laughs> Hi, Janine. Hi. Um, look, I've, I've got a dog and a parrot in separate cages, obviously. <laughs> but the parrot has taken to mimicking the dog and dragging its bottom along the floor of the cage. Mm. Gary, your advice for Janine and I? <laughs> in this, this new talkback segment we have. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's a hard one, isn't it? It is a hard one. <laughs> was the parrot mimicking the no, dog? The dog w no, the parrot was dragging its bottom along the floor of the cage. Oh... Like the dog. I would lower the bottom of the cage. Does that help you, Janine? <laughs> Does that help, Janine, at all? That is really, really inspired. Thank, thank you, you. Gary. Thank you. Thanks for your call. Now, remember, <laughs> thank you very much for, uh, for, for that. Uh, remember, Alexandra's project is on in the few remaining cinemas not showing The Matrix, so do catch that. <laughs> very true. And also, you're in another show called Stingers, uh, Tuesday nights at 9.30. What network's that? Yeah, that would be the Nine Network. Is it? Oh, okay, yes. that's interesting. Yeah. Gary, thank you very much for coming on the show. I, I enjoyed the film very much. Uh, your performance is reason alone to see it, but uh, there are many other reasons as well. Would you please stay for the next segment? No, thanks, Sean. I've got to... Uh, no, fair enough. Thank, please thank head. Gary Sweet. Welcome back. We checked, and according to Gary's contract, he is required to remain on camera for two segments. Uh, just before, uh, just before introducing our next guest, I, I, uh, I wanted to make mention um, of one of our camera operators, uh, Jack Harmon, who is uh, is leaving us after 46 years at Channel Nine. A fantastic effort. And actually, can we get a shot of Jack, please? There, there he is. Uh, Jack, you started way back on the Tarak show. That's right, isn't it? That's uh, right, Sean. Yes. Uh, long time ago. Yeah, now. long time ago. You're a great survivor, and uh, speaking on behalf of everybody associated with McAuliffe tonight and Channel 9, we're sorry to see you go. Um, but, you know, the network does have a strict policy on internet porn, and you were warned <laughs> a number of times. So, best of luck with the retirement and, uh, you know, whatever counselling you're having to, about the porn thing. Uh, good on you, Jack Harmon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Bridie Carter is... No, sorry, not yet. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Oh, sorry. ...is my next guest. <laughs> she's only 29 years old, but she's probably accomplished more than somebody three times her age who has done significantly less. <laughs> she's one of McLeod's daughters, specifically the one called Tess. Please welcome Ms. Bridie Carter. Come out now. Thank you. Oh no, we're in a long... Oh no, the music's no, finished. Yeah. The music yes. is two feet short. <laughs> to see to that. Uh, now, Bridie, I was, uh, I was, look, I was a little, I was a little hurt, or a little oh, sort of a, appalled when, Why? when I was. Well, I, you know, I wanted to prepare for this interview with you, and I, yes. did, I did some research yes. for which I think I deserve some points. Yes, good on you. Um, yes. And I, I, your career has really uh, 
is really mounted on a complete fraud, isn't it? You, 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 you've well, lived a lie. I don't know about that, Sean. What, well, when, when you, when you, well, you're in McLeod's Daughters. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Yes, that's good. <laughs> and yes. uh, and uh, you were, in fact, asked at the audition whether you could ride a horse, and you, oh, yes. you can't ride and a I horse. And I said yes, and you it was lied. a lie, yes. Well, yeah. you, Girl's got to do what a girl's got to do to get her a job, doesn't she? You can't. Mm. Well, I mean, in certain cases, yes. In the case of horse riding, anyway. Um, no, I, well, I sort of, I sort of thought I could ride, but um, when they started to teach us, I slowly discovered that I couldn't. And I think the early videotapes of Lisa Chaplin and I learning how to ride, uh, Channel Nine was greatly shocked and worried. But no, I can ride now. You can ride now. It's all all right. Can you? If you don't ride, if you can't ride, or if you, you know, if you fall off the horse, there's a penalty, is there? Yeah, not? there's a slab for the crew. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I haven't fallen off yet. I've been pig rooted a few times, but. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Sorry, you know I... What term? is it with you, Brian? Well, it's a near buck. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, what's that? It's a near ride. buck. It's not a... Yeah, you know. I've seen you ride. You can ride. You've ridden horses. Sorry, I'm just... I'm just okay, you I'll know. Just put, no, it's all right. No, Gary, please, as, as you like it. <laughs> I was hoping you would ask what pig rooted me. I know what pig rooted me. He knows. Oh, He's I know a horseman. Is, right, okay, so it's not a bad thing, is it? No, it's like a, it's like no, a kind of half buck. It's a half buck. Half you, buck. you know all about that, Sean. Okay. <laughs> 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 anyway. All right. Uh, and uh, and have you learned anything else, uh, you know, uh, apart from oh. that horrible expression? <laughs> on, on, yes, on I've learned stores. a lot. I've learned a lot about animals, um, alpacas. Mm, because you I've learned about breed, alpacas. You breed alpacas. Mating, yeah, it's interesting. Um, the male alpacas go for about 40 minutes or so, and... Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you have to actually assist the male in the mating process. And that's where I stepped back and said, no, 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 I don't intend to lift the tail and... You oh, know, really? But, yeah, it's, um... But how in the wild do they mate? Surely they don't have someone, a chaperone? Or... Well, maybe they do! They're handy friend! Mm. Oh, you referred to know. Gary no, then? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not fair on Gary at all. Please be very unkind to him. That's my job. Maybe we should move on from animals. That's all right. Well, no, that's obviously something you weren't taught at, at NIDA. No, when, when... we didn't learn about alpacas or horses at NIDA. Right. What did you? It's a terrible school, isn't it? You learnt nothing, is that right? No, it's awful. That's right. No. You have great regard for NIDA, though. I know that. I do. I'm not a earlier. bitter NIDA student. I, um, no, I enjoyed my time. It was, um, Incredibly difficult and hard, but one of the best times I've had. Three years of sort of intense drama training, learning all different techniques and, you know, working like that with your fellow students for three years. You get to know each other very well. We well, had um, a very illustrious uh, class, didn't you? You had, yeah. uh, had Rachel Anita. Blake was there. Yes, Sophie Anita. He Sophie Heathcote. Sophie Heathcote. Anita. Well, you'd know. T uh, yeah, Tom I do. Long. I was there. Uh, <laughs> Tom Long. And Martin Lyons from All Saints. Martin Lyons, Anita Hegg, who was on Stingers, but mm -hmm. yeah, mm. lots and of us. Have you worked? Have you got a chance to work with these people in televisually since then, or no? No, I haven't. It's <laughs> awful. <Roses>. No, <laughs> yeah. no, I no, haven't. No. Joking. Maybe one day. That Over. would be nice. You worked with Rachel though, didn't you? Oh, I did work with Rachel. Yes, on the first. Um, lesbian uh, relationship on Home and Away, actually. Rachel Black and I had a near kiss. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't. What, an near kiss? God. Yeah, it was not one of those cut right. ones. Well, yeah. hardly lesbianic. Well, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> air. Mm. Yeah, air kiss. All right, well, um, mm. can, I, can, I ask, uh, can I ask a little about, uh, yeah. about NIDA? Because I know that, Gary, now, Gary, you, you, you Went to teachers' college and, and learnt drama. Well, there. kind you didn't, of. Didn't go to no yeah. And uh, you know, <laughs> you apart can... from Rocky, uh, <laughs> we know of no illustrious graduates from uh, from that particular. Oh yeah, school. well Peter O'Brien uh, went to my teachers' college, and so, right? so did Andrew Clark. In the same year as, as you saw. Oh, uh, no, he's a bit younger than me, Amy. Right. He looks a lot older, but he. he, <laughs> you know, yeah. he was you see, I, I'm I'm completely untrained as an actor. Really? Yes. You, you, you wouldn't never you tell, tell that at all. Absolutely no way. I don't know if you. I don't know. I was in Sea Change. I don't know if you saw really? that. Yes, I was, uh, and I was pretty good too. <laughs> so it's amazing that we three actors can come from so such different uh, different are. worlds. And, and and we're really all the same, really, aren't we? No, As, no. We're okay. almost no. identical. <laughs> Um, all right. But, um, now I heard tell just just yeah. talk mind that there's yeah. a, there's a ghost out uh, on the on the set where you shoot. Yeah, there's uh, a little girl ghost. A little girl ghost. Yeah. Can you can you tell me about that little girl ghost? Well, I haven't seen her, but I've got a feeling it's a little girl. She hasn't been there for a while. But we've had. Um, How do you know that? <laughs> because I can just She's sense a ghost. it, Jared. All right. Um, no. Um, no. People have seen. Um, uh, candles moving upstairs windows at night. We've had an art department girl being pushed against a wall. A very We've strong had, um, girl. We have our eight. <laughs> yes, that's right. She may be little, but she's strong. 
Absolutely. You've got a picture in your That's mind. Yes. Um, we have our ADR room, which is where we record additional dialogue recording. Oh, yes, yes, I knew that. ADR, from my yes. <laughs> You're quick. And um, all the buttons on the panels have been moved. There's been all sorts of things. Right. Mm. And I won't go down into the cellar because I reckon there's something down there. Like wine or something? <laughs> no. Oh, you know, well, there's no wine on our cellar. All right. Let's belay this talk of ghosts because we, uh, we got... Let's go to another of our callers, Jason from Maroolabark. You have a question for Bridie? Yes, hello, Bridie. How are you? Hello, Jason. Uh, I've got a 12-month-old Fox Terrier Dashhound Cross. Oh, it's a male and it has been de but it keeps squatting to go to the toilet as if it's a female. Oh, dear. Mm. And your question? Yeah, Bridie, who's your favourite actor and why? <laughs> It's interesting, Jason. Yeah, isn't yeah it is he? interesting. You know, do you have a favourite actor or a um, actress? I love Meryl Streep. I love Judy Davis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're probably my two favourites. I think. All right, Gary. Uh, Curly from the Three Stooges. Yes. Oh, yeah. um, uh, and I like. Um, um, that's, that's it. About it. Not a Larry. Not Larry question. or a <laughs> no, Shen or any of the lesser nah, Stooges. They never cut it for me. Right. Uh, Curly, well, I like. My favourite actors are you two. Oh, oh stop it. Hey, uh, hey Bridie, you're getting ma married very shortly, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you one question here. Yeah. When, when you sold your exclusive story to, to, um, to who was it? New Idea? It's not one of the, not one of Packers. No, it? it's uh, funny, though. Here we go. Uh, now, did, was it part of the contract that you have that pun, Bridie and Groom? No, no, I didn't think of that. It was very smart of them. Quick, I thought. Are you Quick appalled by that? No, no, I, I love it. It's great. Well, yes. I suppose. What you... about you? Me, I, well, I, th I thought they could probably come up with something better. Better, more original. Yeah, mm. yeah. I can't quite think of anything at the moment. No, but... I'm sure you will. Which is a great pity because I do want to go out on some laugh. <laughs> oh, well, maybe next week. Okay. Uh, would, you, would you stay for the next segment, please? I'd love to, but I can't. Thank right. you anyway. It's very kind of you to ask. All right, thank you. Mm. Thank you, Bridie Carter, and uh, thank you also to Gary Sweet. <laughs> Applaud now. <laughs> Speaking with uh, Shakaya, if you must know. Uh, congratulations on the new single. Not been out very long, has it? About, uh, sorry, I was speaking to Simone and Naomi. <laughs> and uh, and uh, how long has the single been out? For about three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. And the single is a is a Michael Jackson song yeah. originally, isn't it? Yeah, What's the yeah. single called? The Way You Make Me Feel. The Way You Make Me Feel, all right. And uh, he, I imagine that I would think, you know, I have no idea. I'm just talking out my ass here, basically. <laughs> but, but Michael uh, Jackson would seem to be someone who would jealously guard his material. Is it unusual to be able to do a cover? Yeah, I mean, we had the opportunity, so we took it, and except that we couldn't change the, the lyrics. So I'm actually singing. singing about a girl with high heels. Or anything, so. <laughs> Michael would My like mum and dad are asking me what's going on. But not that there's anything wrong with it. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's uh, your choice and a valid one. Uh, now, the single's doing, single's doing, uh, doing what? Not, look, it's not, it hasn't reached gold yet. No. So, you know, traditionally on these sorts of shows, the, there's a presentation made, you know, when it achieves that status. But I uh, haven't quite done it yet, I'm sure it Will, but in the interim, uh, I would like you to accept this assigned photograph of me, <laughs> which uh, I have autographed for you. And that, that's yours to keep. That's yours to keep. And uh, please, it's uh, not available in the shops. You'll have to share that, as, as indeed you, you'll have to share this glass of oh, water well, here. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll put it in my room one week and you can put it in your room. Okay. All right, what charming, what a, a lovely Bert and Don arrangement you have there. Um, look, I. Oh. I've, uh, I've just, uh, I've just forgotten something, uh, reasonably, uh... <laughs> Could you just talk amongst yourselves, please? <laughs> Great continuity. This is a completely different colour. It's supposed to match what I was wearing in there so that the scenes cut together. Well, I didn't know what you'd be wearing. We shot this bit a week ago. It's never anyone's fault, is it? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
What are you doing here? Get back to the studio. I'll, I'll introduce the uh, musical act. Ladies and gentlemen, to perform a track from his, hers or its latest CD, please welcome... Excuse me. Well done, congratulations. Very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Coming up after the break, more show. Sorry, can we go again on that? All right. Is that OK? OK. Now it's time for the funnest segment of all, except for the middle bit of a centipede. It's audience participation, where you, the viewer, get to be the star as we play Bobbing for Apples. Over to you, Sean. Me mm, Whatever. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. And, uh, and, and who do we have here, Francis? Oh, so who do we have here, Francis? Sean! Yes, no, this, I'm here. This, this is another is person. Ollie. Ollie, all right. He's a humanoid from the planet Earth. Yes. He breathes oxygen and he likes Billy Joel. Right, that's, a, that's superb, all right. And, uh, and Ollie, what do, you, what do you really do? Run away, don't run away. Share it with us. What do I... Yeah, what do you do? What do uh, I do? I'm yeah. an apprentice hairdresser. Ah. <laughs> right, and, uh, and, and how's, how's it going, Ollie? Great. Is it? That's, Great, that's, yeah. That's good to hear. All it's... right. How many more years have you got? Uh, about a year and... Oh, two years. To live, I meant. Oh. <laughs> no, let's not go into that. All right. <laughs> now, uh, now you, you know how to play bobbing for apples? Francis, you yeah. tell him. You know how to play bobbing for apples? No, I mean, explain the explain <laughs> rules. Oh, sorry. All right. Now, while Francis is doing that, Pete, what's Ollie playing for? Sean, I have no idea what motivates these people. <laughs> No, Pete, I mean, tell, tell us about the prizes. Oh, but of course. Uh, tonight on Bobbing for Apples, Ollie could win this fantastic carrier air conditioning unit to the value of $100. Portable, cool and rectangular. Carrier, named after its inventor, Willis H. Carrier, and not after any tendency it may have to spread Legionnaire's disease. <laughs> Ugly? Why not attempt to conceal it with Vanda's new range of cosmetics? Women have been turning to Vanda for years to deceive their menfolk. When you think of Vanda Cosmetics, think of Vanda Cosmetics for when you're hideous. Or how about a multicoloured striped trailer? Handy for blending into that rainbow or just jackknifing in style on a deserted highway. Scanish, it means pasty in Ukrainian. Back to you, Sean. And Francis. OK, thank you very much, Pete. All right, now, good luck, good luck, good luck Ollie. Um, each of the uh, apples is, is uh, individually numbered, and that corresponds with a prize, and we encourage audience participation. Please yell out any particular apple with a number on it that you think Ollie should uh, bite. Uh, although, of course, he won't be able to hear because his head will be underwater, but I think it'll add to the atmosphere. All right, you have 20 Earth seconds starting now. Right, now, some information you might find interesting at home, and which I perhaps should have told Ollie before he started. The water contains not only apples, but hydrochloric acid as well. Doing well. Doing well. Do we have any shampoo? Because we could probably give Ollie a, a, a rinse there. He is cheating horribly, but... Yes, there we are! There we go. Thank you, Ollie. What a superb job there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And uh, the number is, uh, is 16. Ollie, you could be going home tonight in this. Sure what your travel arrangements are. Come back right, here, now, Francis, Ollie. Francis has, has, a, has a question there in his book. I've got uh, a question, Ollie. Yeah. Mm. You nervous? Not really. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, Ollie, you were nervous. You were nervous, and, and, and rightly so. Um, but uh, we, we'll give you a backup question there, Francis. You've got the backup, the backup question. question. I do you have the mind. backup question, Sean, Thank and here you it very is. Much. <clears throat> Ollie, it's multiple choice. All right. A, B, or C? A, A. B. A. Uh, no, oh. sorry, no. So close. Couldn't have been more wrong, really. Uh, but we, you know, it's the second show. We want to give something away. So, Francis, you got a third question? Again? Well, I have a look, Sean. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, right. Here we go. <laughs> if John Laws and Alan Jones fell out of an aeroplane, Ollie, who do you think would plummet to their death first? A, John Laws, B, Alan Jones, C, I don't know, but it's certainly worth trying, isn't it? <laughs> um, C. C is the correct answer! 
tell me what he's won, Francis. Let me sure. Congratulations, Ollie. You've won a magnificent trip for one to South Mole Island. Seven days and one night on this fabulous atoll, recently certified free of anthrax, with spending money for the value of 300 pesos. If you must have a mole, make it a South Mole. <laughs> Prize not valid for episode two. Oh, bad luck, Ollie. Sorry to hear about that. Tell him off and get him out of here. Peter, tell us things. That's right, Sean. Interstate contestants on audience participation choose to stay at Sydney's fabulous Rockman Regency Hotel, but are forced by us to stay at this much cheaper one instead. The East Gippsland Hotel Motel gives new meaning to the phrase cockroach-infested fire trap. Thank you very much, Pete. Well, like an understocked herb salesman, we've run out of oregano. <laughs> time! Sorry, time. We have time. But before we go, a quick look at the rainfall figures for regional Victoria. And as you can see there, nil has plenty and plenty has nil. <laughs> so, thanks very much to our guests, Gary Sweet, Bridie Carter, Shakaya and Gerard Depardieu. Last week, to take us out, we used some old footage from our vaults, and I've since copped a bit of flack for that. Received a number of letters pointing out that there are a lot of talented singers and musicians and dancers out there who would kill for a chance to be on national television and have the credits rolled over them. One of these letters was from a young man with a bright future in this business, judging from his penmanship on the enclosed cheque. And it's my pleasure to introduce him tonight as our credit roll performer. Here to sing Beautiful Sunday, Mr James Pegler. See you in the Monkey House, Australia. <laughs> Thank you.